Hi everyone and welcome back to Sonia's Prep. I have an excellent Rosh Hashanah Prep video for you today and I am so excited to get started. This is part two of my Rosh Hashanah Prep where I'll share with you the fish, sides, salads and desserts. If you still haven't seen the part one of my Rosh Hashanah video where I share my menu plan, tablescape, and mains, I will have a card up above and link in the description box below. It features lamb soup, stuffed chicken, as well as stuffed onions. Now let's roll up our sleeve and let's get prepping. First up is this bass with pineapple salsa. I think this is called a black bass, that's what my husband said. And it's very simple to make with salt, black pepper, and some fish seasoning. So after washing the fish and placing it on a baking tray, I'll be sprinkling on some salt, black pepper, and fish seasoning. If you don't have fish seasoning, you could use any of your favorite spices that you normally make your fish with. After all the spices are on the fish, I drizzle on a little bit of avocado oil, use my fingers to smear it all in, and bake it in the oven. I bake the fish with the broil setting on for about 7 minutes until it's perfectly crispy. Now to make the pineapple salsa, you obviously need a pineapple. I dice that into tiny cubes and after dicing that, I have a red bell pepper there that I'm going to be dicing as well into small cubes, placing that into the bowl. A red onion is going to be diced up next with a bunch of cilantro for all of my cilantro the haters i should say you can definitely use parsley or mint that's a great option as well put in some salt black pepper lime juice and avocado oil and mix that thoroughly this pineapple salsa is a showstopper in and of itself it's so gorgeous with its um, crazy amount of colors and it is an absolutely stunning addition to the fish so i take a plate and i slice up some limes and decorate it beautifully you can definitely decorate this however you choose but i thought this would make a very cute addition and once the fish is out of the oven i place that onto my plate and right before serving i would add in my pineapple salsa over the top Next are our Rosh Hashanah side dishes. I got these organic multicolored carrots and fingerling potatoes from Trader Joe's. They look really pretty and festive. And on the side there, I prepared my station with a baking tray lined with parchment paper for easy cleanup, salt and black pepper, and avocado oil. As you can tell, I have a helper in the kitchen seasoning up these vegetables. This is my youngest daughter and she always loves helping me in the kitchen, thank God. So we put some salt and black pepper onto the carrots as well as some avocado oil. I bake them in a preheated oven set at 450 degrees for about 25 to 30 minutes until they're fully cooked through. Separately, I made a type of chimichurri sauce, I would call it. In the bowl, I have cilantro, parsley or dill, six cloves of crushed garlic, salt and black pepper, a quarter cup of oil, and about three tablespoons of vinegar. I drizzle in about two to three tablespoons of honey to balance out all of the flavors. Mix it well and top all of the vegetables with the sauce right before serving. Next up, I'll be prepping my butternut squash. So I take the butternut squash, I wash it, cut it into big chunks so that I can plate, place it into a steaming basket. I take a big pot, place some water inside with the steaming basket in there and place all of the butternut squash over the top of it and steam this. You could also bake this if you prefer using your oven, but I'm just gonna be steaming it. It's most convenient for me. I didn't want to turn on the oven for 45 minutes to an hour. So I'm just placing it on my stove top. Now that my oven is full to capacity with all the things that I'm baking, I'm gonna get started on my butternut squash pie. 
my kids are absolutely in love with this butternut squash pie they don't even know what's inside of it it's quite healthy with a lot of the vegetables the eggs and i use this graham cracker crust which is already pre-made but you can totally absolutely use a frozen pre-made pie crust or make it yourself and these are all of the simple ingredients that we're going to be using i have some brown sugar flour eggs cinnamon riches whip and salt so take the pie crust remove that plastic film and place it into the oven to get nice and toasty now we'll be mushing up all of the butternut squash so i peel all of the butternut squash from the actual peel of the vegetable place it into a bowl and use a fork and give it a good mash to the butternut squash i'll be adding in the three whole eggs one container of the riches whip i'm going to have the exact measurements and the full recipe in the description box below for you to have all of the ingredients and measurements i mix in all of the wet ingredients first you could use a fork or a whisk i do not recommend using a blender because it will make the mixture too runny i then add in the brown sugar and the flour and give everything a mix as well and sprinkle on a little bit of salt to taste once all of that is nicely incorporated using a whisk, you can place it into the pie crust which we have toasted in the oven. Depending on how large your butternut squash was, you might have a bit left over of the mixture and that is absolutely fine. You can either make two of these pies or reserve some of that and make it later. Right before baking, I place in some cinnamon right over the top and I bake it in the oven for about 45 minutes to an hour until it's fully cooked through. Moving on to our Rosh Hashanah salads. After washing the baby kale, as you see here, I use a salad spinner to get out all of the water. I place it into a beautiful salad bowl and add in a bunch of vegetables and fruits. I have some red onions here and oranges that I cut into wedges using this method. I take the knife and between all of the veining, I scoop out all of the oranges. Definitely don't just throw out what's left of the orange or the mandarin, just squeeze it over the salad. We are playing on a contrast of a bunch of colors here, so I'll be adding in the green and red apple slices as well. And to incorporate all of the ingredients throughout, I place the sliced ingredients halfway in the middle of the salad as well as the top. The multitude of colors makes this salad pop. To finish off, I add in a handful of pomegranate seeds. And if you aren't a fan of baby kale, you can definitely replace it with something different. Dress this with your favorite dressing right before serving. to our arugula salad with raspberry vinaigrette to the arugula i will be adding in sliced red onions chopped apples cherry tomatoes and chopped peaches as well as cucumbers and you can definitely omit things that you don't like or don't have in the kitchen this is just a salad where you could use what you have in your refrigerator play on different colors and top it with store-bought raspberry vinaigrette and it is such a showstopper Using a mandolin slicer, I slice up two large carrots and we'll have a link to everything that I'm using in my video today in my Amazon storefront in the description box below. I squeeze in a whole lemon and I add in two cloves of minced garlic. 
I season with salt and black pepper, cumin and coriander. I then drizzle in about two to three tablespoons of honey to balance out all of the acidity in the salad. Don't forget the quarter cup of avocado oil and mix thoroughly. You can also garnish with some dill and the salad is all done. We love avocados in our home and this is a fun way to present it on your Rosh Hashanah table. I thinly slice them onto a plate. I squeeze a lime over them to prevent them from browning. I then drizzle on honey and top them with your favorite toppings. I'm using here totally guacamole seasoning and everything but the bagel seasoning to top over the avocados. Beet carpaccio is another favorite and a must-have on my Rosh Hashanah table and after boiling it for about 30 minutes, I peel them and slice them thinly with a mandolin slicer. I then line them up beautifully on a plate or a platter and using the same chimichurri sauce as we did with our vegetables at the beginning of the video, I dress it with the beets. The contrast in colors is stunning and the flavor combination is absolutely delicious. All of the recipes, by the way, will be linked in the description box below for you. Now on to desserts. Since apples are one of the simanim for Rosh Hashanah, I wanted to make an apple pie for dessert. I will be making the pie dough from scratch, but I will be giving myself some grace with the pre-made apple pie filling, and that is okay. The pie crust comes together very quickly in a food processor. I add in two and a half cups of all-purpose flour, half of a teaspoon of salt, and half of a tablespoon of sugar. I mix everything to combine. I add in half a cup of dairy-free butter, such as butterine or margarine, and I pulse that in the food processor. I pulse it until the dough mixture looks like coarse sand and once you accomplish that add in six tablespoons of ice water it may need one tablespoon more and if you feel like you need it definitely add that the dough will start to form prepare two films of plastic wrap pour the dough over onto the table and then gently gather it all up carefully not to over mix and then divide the dough into two and wrap with plastic. Refrigerate the dough for about an hour before using it. Once that hour passes and the dough has chilled, roll it out onto a floured surface. And if it starts to crack, simply put it back together and roll it out again. Place the pie plate over the dough that you just rolled out to make sure that it's the perfect size and will fit. And to transfer, roll the dough onto the rolling pin like this and roll that right onto the pie plate. Adjust the pie crust as needed. And now again, I can definitely spend the next 20 minutes making my apple pie filling from scratch, which is delicious, but it is okay to get some help sometimes. So I'll be using two cans of pre-made apple pie filling and adding that inside. And later on, I'll be taking out our second dough that we made 
that was in the refrigerator, I'll take it out and roll it out to make the lattice on the top of the apple pie. This channel is all about my Orthodox Jewish life and I share here on this channel Shabbat meal preps and holiday inspirations like this one and general tips and tricks as a busy working mom and how to manage the many things that we have on our plates. And if you enjoy this type of content, I would so love it if you would consider subscribing to the channel and giving this video a big thumbs up. Don't forget to click on the notification bells down below so that you can be made aware of my next uploads. Using a knife or a pastry cutter, cut the dough into strips to make the lattice over the pie. And I'll have this pastry cutter in the description box below, linked in my Amazon storefront as well. I then pinch the rim of the pie using my left index finger and thumb and then my right index finger. It's hard to explain but I hope you can understand it with the video footage that I'm showing you here. With the leftover dough, I then decorate the top of the pie with some flower cutouts. To finish the pie off right before baking, my big helper is helping me egg wash the pie and I also love sprinkling in some sugar right over the top before baking. I bake it in a 350 degree preheated oven between 40 minutes to an hour until it is perfectly cooked through. It's not Rosh Hashanah without honey cake and this recipe is perfect. The cake comes out so light and fluffy and moist and the full recipe will be in the description box below. In a stand mixer, I add in two eggs and beat it with 3 fourths cup of sugar. Half cup of oil goes in next as well as one cup of honey and the trick to getting the honey out easily is to spray the cup with oil first and it'll slide right off. Add in two teaspoons of vanilla extract, a dash of salt, one teaspoon of cinnamon and one tablespoon of baking powder. Next, I add in two cups of all-purpose flour and mix it with one cup of coffee that I brewed earlier.
be sure to scrape down the bowl and oil your bundt cake before pouring in your batter. I bake the honey cake in a preheated oven set at 350 degrees for about 40 minutes. I like decorating this honey cake with some slivered almonds. You could add in a little bit of honey to the top of it so that the almonds can stick nicely. I hope you all enjoyed watching this part 2 of my Rosh Hashanah prep as much as I did making it for you. I want to take the time here and thank each and every single one of you for all of the messages that I received on part 1 last week. It actually makes me quite emotional. I love that so many of you here are from so many different backgrounds and in a world where so many people are pitted against one another i'm so thankful that we can all connect here respectfully so thank you again from the bottom of my heart for all of your continued support shana tova and happy prepping from my family to yours <laughs>